What's up, miniature enthusiasts? Today, I'm showing you a goose cam, same as usual. Check him out, he's looking really energetic today. And today, instead of painting a miniature, I've decided to make one of my own with trash. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you how I made a Mott and Bailey, which is a 9th to 11th century style castle, primarily found in England and northern France. It's got the Mott, it's got the Bailey, but we gotta go outside and check out these sites that date the video a whole lot because it's starting to snow here now, but that's fine. I need to get some materials for this. So we're gonna go scavenge the earth for nature's bounty. And will you look at that? It sticks. I decided to put them in an oven for, at uh, 170 degrees for about an hour. This helps get rid of all of their little critters that are all inside of them. Just put it in there. Pop that bad boy in, close it up, don't think about it. Wow, in seconds, it's already good. Nah, I'm just kidding. That's some editing magic for you. So, I put him down here, and now it's time to make a palisade wall. These are the walls that surround the Mont and Bailey itself. You see them a lot in video games and whatnot, the wooden walls. I have this miniature here that I'm going to be using for scale, so that hopefully I make it roughly the right size. We'll see. I feel like I did a pretty decent job in the end. My cat is screaming in the background right now. You might hear it. I decided I would cut the sticks with an X-Acto knife, and after a very short attempt, yeah, no, that wasn't gonna happen. So, I decided I would order a new tool that would help me with this. And for now, I just had to wait. Now the tool came in. Move that X-Acto knife out of the way. Look at that, it's a trimmer for sticks. So I did this for what seemed like all eternity, cutting these sticks. I ended up having to get a lot more because I, I vastly underestimated the amount that I would need. But I cut them all up and then sharpened them with a pencil sharpener in order to give them that pointed edge, that tip that kind of defines the look. The idea for this was to make it a modular kind of construction, and you'll see that throughout the video. We'll, we'll see how successful it is. But there they are. It sticks. But unlike the band, I don't think anyone even likes this at all. So I needed to make some bases for all of these sticks, so I cut it out of foam core. It was just a quick and easy process of getting them all, you know, measured out properly. I wanted to make it kind of square shaped, as uh, that kind of works well for a Dungeons and Dragons setup, which is what I'm trying to do here. I got some corner pieces as well, and it's a decent size. I kind of wish it would have been bigger. But overall, it does the trick. So I hot glued these pieces onto their bases, uh, which had no issues at all. Uh, as I put them on, they just miraculously stuck well every single time. Uh, there were no issues. It, it was just a, a solid construction. Overall, you'll don't look at that. Oh, don't look at those either. The rest were fine. My whole uh, reason for doing a lot of this is to show you that if I can do these things, you can definitely do them too, and probably better. So 
So I had to cut some more sticks in order to fill that void that I had, uh, because even though I got more, it still wasn't enough. And then covered them all in Mod Podge just to seal them. Covered them in a few coats just to make sure that it went all the way through. It, it ended up giving them a bit of a strange texture, but it works. Then using some brown paint, I got ready to paint all of the bases for these. I just wanted it to be a basic brown so that it doesn't stand out when you see the base. My cat is still screaming in the background. I don't know what he wants. He's already been fed. Then putting in some more Mod Podge with some water, just to, well, water it down. I spread it along the bases of each one of these, and then proceeded to add some flocking so that it gave it a, a nice little grassy look. I ended up using a little bit of a more yellowish kind of flocking on top, just little sprinkles to, to make it look a little more realistic. If anything, it looks like there were a lot of dogs that came by, and well, that's okay. This is a fortress for dogs. I made the mistake of just touching the stuff with the Mod Podge, and it was it was not a good idea. I, I don't recommend it at all. There I am sprinkling a little bit and making sure that I got all the excess off. I would always put the excess back into their containers, but uh, there you go. It looks kind of like there's some sort of grass or something there. I feel like it does a decent job, but now I need to add some of that other green stuff. We got some clump foliage from Woodland Scenics. That's where I got most of my things for uh, grass and whatnot. Mixed it with some Mod Podge so that it would be nice and easy to put onto these. Uh, definitely, once again, like putting these sticks on themselves. No issues at all. I mixed it all up, which got a lot of it stuck in the bristles of the paintbrush, which is an expert move because then whenever you paint something else, you might occasionally get little bits of flocking in it. I used a lot of the clump foliage to cover up the bits that were a bit more open. Now I need to make the gate, however. I made little uh, stands for it, as you can see. I didn't use that cardboard box at all. This isn't sponsored by Quaker. I decided to use that piece of foam core instead. And I uh, put some coffee stirring sticks all along it, measured it out. I needed to see exactly what I needed. And through some Mod Podge, I was able to stick them all. I had measured them out. I thought it was just the right size for it. As you will see, that is not the case. I somehow misjudged some of the cuts that I made, and that's just how life goes. Sometimes they would bend up, but my trick was to put on books on top of them. I used paper towels in between the books, however, and then it just got stuck to everything, and it was a real pain, but I put little pieces of the sticks whenever I needed to, just to kind of cover up those parts. I added uh, on the one side uh, two bits that were a little longer, so that I could tie some string to it later, so I could make this a functioning drawbridge. Mm -hmm. 
using some primer, just some regular gray primer mixed with Mod Podge. I primed the bridge itself. I didn't want to do it to the wood so that I could keep its texture and color because I feel like it already does a pretty good job there. I then covered it in brown. Just uh, the, the same kind of brown that I used for the base of the other thing, but I then added some Agrax Earthshade just to kind of give it a little bit more texture and then gave it a nice little dry brush with a lighter beige kind of brown color. I then use a hammer and nails uh, splitting the wood which was not my intention, but I used that kind of as the fulcrum, I believe is the term. I'm not sure, I'm not gonna look it up. And then I put it in the sides of the foam core so that it could stick right in there without having to have any sort of interesting mechanism. My cat is running, just running around the apartment screaming. I don't know why. Using some taller sticks so that I could get this all ready. I have the frame. I extended the bases just a little bit and added some flocking. But what I wanted to do was add in those little bits that I just cut off so that I had parts that I could tie twine to. Because once again, I want this to be a functioning drawbridge. Don't do this at home. Or ever. I burnt off the little bits just so that it's a bit less stringy. And then uh, with the help of my invaluable partner who helped me multiple times during this, it was all tied up and it would, in theory, though this theory proved to be correct, work as an actual drawbridge. So the idea is the two posts represent either if it is up or down, and depending on which state you want it in, you can tie it. That is the drawbridge mostly complete. Oh, look. Guess who it is? So then adding some more hot glue to the sides here, we tied on more of the twine to give it a bit more of a complete look before it didn't really look like they were stuck together before. We're trying to make this semi-accurate to what a modern Bailey is, but as you'll see, I take many creative liberties, and you're just gonna have to deal with that. But there it is, and it looks pretty decent. I feel like it mostly does the job. Now, we need to make the mound. So using this bowl as a guide, I was able to math out exactly what I needed here. Cut that out, had some little flaps so that it was easier to stick together. And there's the base of the tower. Cutting the circle that we had before into little flaps allowed us to get that all wrapped around nice and then we taped it all together put a little toilet paper roll to give it a little bit of structural integrity and then using a paper towel uh, you can see my amazing camera work there I covered it all after covering the paper towel in some Mod Podge cut out some pieces for the stairs here. 
I wanted to make it so that these stairs can fit a miniature on them, so they're gonna look a little awkward, but they're a lot more functional than they would be otherwise. And then putting some Mod Podge onto the tops of each of these stairs. I put on some small coffee stirring sticks to give it a wood texture. And then I used some brown paint to cover the general mound itself after giving it a small amount of primer. It was a lot of primer. I then used some gray on these stairs here to give it a stone kind of texture. I thought that that was probably the best thing to do in terms of saving myself some time. I then dry brushed and added some shade, similar to the other things that I've done before. And then I put some Mod Podge on the mound itself once again. I felt like it was a pretty good idea to kind of reinforce it by putting on basically an entire bottle of Mod Podge. No, I didn't actually do that, but it felt like I did. I then added some dirt to make it feel like it's actually a mound of dirt. The texture of the paper towel still went through, but I went ahead with putting on the grass. I tried to cover up as much as I can, and I ended up adding more off camera. After putting on the grass, I then sprayed it with a mixture of water and glue. A lot of people use PVA glue, but I don't own that, so here I am. I had to do many, many sprays in order to get it so that it wasn't all falling off. Now that it looks somewhat like a mound of dirt, I then decided to add some clump foliage to the sides to kind of make it look like there's some vegetation, some bushes or whatnot kind of growing around the sides. I also used it to cover up some of the unsightly seams that formed due to the paper towel being a paper towel. It took a little bit of time and they kept falling off over and over and over and over and over and over again, but eventually it looked okay. I then cut some textures into the base of the tower and added some primer. I wanted to give it a wood kind of look, which I felt like worked well. I was going to end up making the entire tower out of some sort of wood, but I wanted to save time. So I used some brown paint here, similar in process to what I used for the drawbridge. I then put on some Egrax Earthshade, which filled in a lot of the, the gaps. And now is time for the tower itself. So thanks to this pizza box, I was able to get something. So first with the top of the tower, actually, I cut out some windows here. They are very rough, but they do the job. I then decided to prime these. I definitely didn't try just adding paint on initially and it failed. I went straight with priming at the start. and then painted them brown so that they would not really show up through wood. And then after a night of having that wrapped around to kind of let it conform to the shape, though it gave it a little bit of issues. It'll just be like, you'll speed up really yeah. fast and be like, don't do what I did. That's the whole fucking video. It's like 80% of this video. Oh no, good. I nailed it all together, and then my partner 
helped with adding some hot glue to the inside to keep it all in one piece. And then cut out a door. I didn't end up making a usable door, but that's okay. There's always room for improvement on this. And then use some coffee stirring sticks around the base of the tower in order to give it that wood look that Mont and Bailey's are particularly known for, well, in their earlier forms at least. And after covering it in some Agrax Earthshade without doing any sort of primer, I feel like it did a very interesting texture on it, and I liked it a lot. I then did some dry brushing to kind of bring out more of the edges in certain spots. It also gave it a bit more of a dirty look, which I feel like complements the design. I I know that you're thinking, is that real wood just turned into paper? Nope, it's just paper that looks like wood. I was going to put wood all in the inside, but once again, I didn't have the patience to do that, so I just, I just did that. It works. It's not particularly noticeable unless you're watching this video and then you're looking at it and thinking, wow, Matt, you're incredibly lazy, why did you do that? Completely disregarding the brown paint that I put on earlier, I decided to make the walls of the top of the tower gray to give them a stone kind of texture. I wanted them to look a little either stone-like or like stucco. I know that that's not particularly accurate, but at the same time, I had been doing this for so long that I felt like I wanted to either throw this thing in the garbage or perish. Using some of the similar kind of color that I used for dry brushing for the wood, I dry brushed the stone and I feel like it brought out a pretty interesting texture. I had done a lot of goopiness for the Mod Podge that was on it, which kind of raised some edges and whatnot, and I feel like it actually looks kind of decent, surprisingly. I then glued some more coffee stirring sticks. It never ends. Just like this video. Similar process to the base of the tower here, just adding some Agrax Earthshade. I then decided to do some more dry brushing. I ended up doing another passive Agrax Earthshade just to kind of bring it down again because I felt like I lightened it a little too much. I had also, some for some reason off camera, cut out a little trap door and added a little piece of metal just to kind of make it reasonable as to how you would get to and from this area from the bottom to the top and then added some little bundles of coffee stirring sticks to act as pillars to seal up the corners so that they're not particularly visible. I feel like it looks pretty decent. This is my first build of this size, so I'm pretty happy with it. Then to seal up the edges around here, I put some wood, uh, just some more coffee stirring sticks. I feel like it added a necessary amount of texture to things, and then I put it around each one of the edges to hide their, the difference between them and the tower itself. It was now time for the roof, because 
this project just keeps going. I vastly underestimated how long this would take. I then cut out these triangles so that I would have a just a, a very standard looking roof. I didn't want it to be anything crazy. Once again, pizza boxes are my savior for this. I taped it up, which made it nice and nice and easy to pick up. Don't look at that logo. And then I, using some hot glue, was able to seal up the edges to give it a necessary amount of structural integrity. I also did it to the inside. I then used some primer. I just wanted it to be black. Felt like that was a pretty good idea for having shingles. I poured way too much Mod Podge mixed with the primer, so I had to carefully pour it back in. It's nothing but mistakes here. We don't, we don't make mistakes though. It's a lot of mistakes. I gooped that up really nice. I did it to the inside as well, just to make it less visible. I now needed to add some shingles to this. So I cut out a nice little grid, cut out each one of these lines of shingles. Ended up using scissors afterwards because that's the smart thing to do. I don't know why I used a knife before, it was completely unnecessary. But I cut out the strips of shingles and then primed them up. I ended up weathering them a little bit on my own and then glued them on. It was not particularly easy to get them on and they didn't fit properly, so I had to tear off little bits of shingles, but I feel like it looks kind of decent. I then used an obscene amount of hot glue to glue that little cap on so that I could actually pick the thing up and then painted it all black. I did some dry brushing after I had painted it, which I did almost entirely off camera, not because I didn't record it, because I was stupid and didn't know where the camera was, but there it is. Put a little bit of flocking just to make it look a little more weathered and give it a bit more character. I added it to the other parts, but once again did it off camera because I don't know what composition is. And now it's time to show you. I know that this isn't particularly the best project that anyone here has probably seen, but I'm proud of this. This took a lot of time, took a lot more time than I thought it was going to, and overall I feel like this does a pretty good job of being a modular design. I can use this for so many different things. If you like this video, please uh, consider subscribing. I do also have a Patreon if you want to give to that, though I understand if you don't because I am... My talent is minimal. Thanks for watching, though. I really appreciate it. If you made it to the end here, that means a lot. And I'll see you next time.